Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So what we're going to be covering today's video is we're going to be looking at statics, equilibrium of rigid bodies, and we're going to be uh, looking for some uh, tension forces in a cable here and this will be the 14th part in our series. So we have this picture here on the left with all these dimensions and all these points shown and it says that ladder AB of length L and weight W can be raised by the cable from B to C. Determine the tension T required to raise the NB just off the floor in terms of W and theta as our first part. And then if H equals eight feet, L equals 10 feet and the weight of the ladder is 35 pounds. So we have two parts here. One part we're gonna do in variable format and the other we're actually gonna find a real answer. So, we have this picture going on here, and really the only thing that is um, not really labeled here is that we have W for our weight acting at G, and the length from A to B is L. So if you want to go like this, from L right there, from A to B, since it's the length of the ladder. So what we're going to have to do in order to find the tension force and the cable here, we are going to have to some moments about the only other reaction point, which is A, in order to get T. So that would involve our weight and our tension force if we some moments about point A up there. So we're going to have to get a few things in order to do that. One is we are going to have to find a few angles within this uh, system here. So since everything is at an orientation here and we don't really know a lot of angles, um, the best part to do with this one is to orient your X and Y coordinate system with this particular problem at the angle of the ladder. So what that means is that we have point A up here, point G right here, and point B down here. What I'm going to do is I am going to orient my axis such that the Y is perpendicular to my ladder and my X is parallel to it. So what that means is that my angle theta will be right here, just as it was off the horizontal. And my tension is going up like this. And my weight will be going down like this. I already know that this dimension from A to B is L. So if I'm going to some moments at A, using this orientation of an X and Y axis, what I'm going to need to know is the distance from A to G. And I'm going to need to know this angle of the tension uh, force off of the ladder. We'll just call that alpha. And I'm going to need to know this angle right here as well. So the reason why I need this angle and this angle, which I'll just call this, let's just call this, delta. So, which I think that's delta, or is that, yeah, that's delta. So the reason why I need this angle delta and this angle alpha here is because if I sum forces or some moments about A, only this vert or this portion right here, which is parallel to the y-axis, counts because it has an orientation or a component of the weight and the x goes right through A. And the same thing with T. I'm only going to have a portion, which is my component, which is parallel to the Y, having moment about A. So really, I only have two forces here that have moments about A when I orient it like this with my X and Y axis. So let's find alpha and let's find delta. And we also need to find this dimension X up here, which I should probably just call that X1 since my axis is right here. And the whole goal is here, what is T? So let's do some... Uh, calculations here to get all these unknown values that I need to find. Um, let's start with the first one of alpha. It is one of the easier ones. So redrawing our figure here of, and let me scroll back up so that we can actually see it. There we go. So redrawing my figure here, this would be point A. This is C down to B and then back up to C. So I am told that the length of the ladder is L. It is shown that the distance from A to C is L, and this angle right here is theta, and I am looking for alpha right here. Well, what happens here with this triangle format is that it's an isosceles triangle because we have two sides of equal length. So what that means is that the angle off of uh, the B here is the same as this angle over here because of the two sides being equal for the isosceles triangle. 
So I can find alpha in variable format because essentially what I have is theta plus two alpha gives me 180 degrees. So alpha is just going to be 180 degrees minus off theta. Well, that's an ugly theta. Let me redraw that minus theta all over two, which essentially gives me 90 degrees minus theta over two. All right, so we have this one at being 90 degrees minus theta over two for my angle. So that means I will only use the sine of that to get this component in the y direction. And now I just need to determine what this delta is. Well, you can think of this delta, and, and you may know this right off the bat for those of you that do not know how to do this right away when you have oriented axis at an angle. So let me redraw it real quick with just my axis and just focusing on G here. This is what we have going on. So there's my Y and there's my X. Well, right here is the original horizontal line and we know that this is theta. Well, the weight will always be acting in the downward direction. And we know that this original angle right here was 90 degrees between the horizontal and the vertical portion of the weight, because that's how gravity works. So we know that this is 90 degrees. So what this means is that this angle off of the X is going to be 90, it's going to be 90 degrees minus off theta. Well, what is this other angle between my X and my Y right here? Well, this angle right here between the X and Y is also 90 degrees. So this angle will be 90 degrees minus 90 minus theta. Well, the minus minus 90 drops out and then the minus goes in here and makes it a plus theta. So my angle delta here is actually going to be my theta angle. So now I found my angles um, alpha and delta, which is delta is just theta, and alpha is 90 minus theta over two. The last thing I need up here is my x over one, or my x one dimension. So I can do this one by using similar triangles, using this right triangle that forms right here. When you go down all the way from A to the ground over to B, and then using the ladder here because we have our height, our height over two, and then our length, and we're looking at this length over two. And once again, you may see this right away, but this is just for others that cannot. All right, so working on that x1 dimension, what we have is that we have a right triangle that forms here when we're looking from B to A and then down to the ground level, and G's right here. Well, this entire length right here is L from A to B, and I am just looking for whatever x1 is, which my drawing is atrocious, and I'm sorry. So we are also told that this height right here is h over two, and the overall height is h. So we have two similar triangles forming here because they have the same slope. So we can just ratio out the height to the hypotenuse of this right triangle to get x1. So in doing so, we would have something that looks like this. So we would have h over l is equal to h2 over my x1 dimension, cross multiply, and um, simplify, you would end up with x is just l of two. As I said, you may be able to see that right away, but that's how you would do that calculation if g wasn't exactly in the center. All right, so now we have all our information and what I'm going to do real quick is get rid of some of this information. So we can make some room here. And it really likes to capture everything and delete it. There we go. That's much better. All right. So now I am left with my original picture here and my original orientation of my axis. So as I said, the entire thing here is that we wanted to sum moments about point A to get T or get everything in terms of T. So now we have all our angles and all our dimensions here. So summing moments about A, we would just have this dimension or this component of G and then this component of t, which is perpendicular to my y dimension. So I would have my weight, and it would be cosine of my delta angle, which is just cosine of theta, times the distance up to a, which would just be l over 2 along the ladder length. It will be rotating clockwise about point a, so it is negative. And then I have my t over here, 
So it would be rotating counterclockwise about A, so plus T. And then this would be the sine of my alpha angle, which my alpha angle is 90 minus theta over 2. And then times the length to get it up there, which is just the length of the ladder L. And all of that would be equal to 0. So let's rearrange here in terms of T or T equals. We would have W cosine of theta times L over 2 all divided by sine of 90 minus theta over 2 times L. Well, the Ls are going to drop out here. The 2 will go into the denominator. And whenever you have sine of 90 minus some angle, that is just cosine of that angle value. So this would end up being W cosine of theta all divided by 2 cosine of theta over 2. And that would be your first answer for the tension value in that cable in variable format based upon the dimensions in the picture given. All right, so that's the first part. And then the second part is very easy because we already have the T value in um, variable format. So we just need to plug in H for 8 feet, 10 or 8 for H, and then 10 feet for L, and then 35 for W. Well, really, the only thing we need here is theta. We already have the W right here, which is 35 feet. So we're going to have to use our length of 10 feet and our 8 feet height. And what we're going to do is we are going to form another little right triangle right here using the ladder as the hypotenuse and getting theta using our dimensions. So for part B, this is what we're going to do. So we are just going to use that right triangle with our dimensions here. So this would be A, this would be B. And we know that this right here is angle theta, which is what we are looking for. And I'm just going to call this angle beta right here. We know that the entire height is 8 feet and the length of the ladder is 10 feet. So we can get angle beta just by using the cosine inverse of the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So beta would just be cosine inverse of 8 over 10 which gives me 36.87 degrees. And then, of course, theta will be 90 degrees minus off beta, which 90 degrees minus 36.87 gives me 53.13 degrees as my theta. So what I can do is plug that in up there, plug in 35 for W, because the orientation is not going to change because we just found it in for variable format. So T will be equal to 35 pounds times the cosine of 53.13 degrees. All of that divided by 2 times the cosine of 53.13 degrees divided by 2. And we end up with 11.74 pounds as our answer in that upward right direction. Technically, this would also need an arrow in the upper right direction for that tension force. So that's how you would work that problem first in variable format and then using your variable format and determining an actual tension force with the dimensions given. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us out. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.